So let us begin now with our call to worship. Come to our God, all who hunger for life. Our God, who nourishes us at the table of grace. Come to our God, all who are worn out by life. For it is God who provides the rest we need. Come to our God, all who are weighed down. For it is our God who carries our burdens with us. Please now join us in the hymn for today, Great is Thy Faithfulness. So it looks like weather has cooperated. Shade is cooperating after our time last. Hi, Woodwards, can you, you hear us okay? Great. Um, after our time last month, we were up a bit further and everybody was in the sun, except for the worship team, which was like, hey, back. So uh, I hope this works out for you. I hope you can hear clearly and we are going to begin 
a time of thought and message and scripture. It's been long known, and maybe not so publicly, or admitted that most pastors have their own personal canon. Now, not with two ends. Though some of us feel like we need them at times. Not double end, just just one. And what that canon is, is it's, it's, a, it's a chosen scripture. It's, it's called a, a biblical canon. And uh, it guides as an authoritative measure a community. So there was a canon and a gathering of people in a collective that decided which scriptures actually made it into the Bible. Because there were a lot of scriptures out there, and there were many letters written, but the ones after they did sourcing and things like that, they believed back in the day, including the Old Testament, which has a different order, actually, than our Christian canon, uh, that these were the most authentic documents that could guide us in our tradition. The English word canon, in its original Greek, actually means rule or measuring stick. A selection, then, I would say, of go-to text that keeps us in line, you know, keep, keep well within our measure. But when I say a pastor has a selected canon, we have these go-to texts that are our favorites. We kind of preach from them a lot. So, confession, here I am. My go-to texts tend to be the two greatest commandments. You know, love your dogs, all sort of heart, life, love your so You guys probably ought to do that yourself. You probably knew what I was saying, even though I mumbled. <laughs> also, I really love First and Second Corinthians. I love those letters. But, but not to mention, I mean, how much I love First, Second, and Third John, the Johannian letters, not the Gospel of John. I'm not saying I don't like it, but I'm just saying I really love to go to those letters. In fact, if I had to choose five books, if you said choose five books from Scripture that you took with you, I would choose definitely the Gospel of Luke. I love that Christmas story. It only shows up in that in Gospel Luke. So, in that context, I love the Gospel Luke. I love First Corinthians chapters twelve and thirteen, especially. And I probably would take the Book of James with me as well because it kind of keeps you in check. You know, points its finger at you and says, you know, keep your tongue. You know, you know they call it the flaming tongue. It sounds like a bad, bad thing after eating Mexican food, but it's <laughs> but it's, it it really tries to keep people honest. You know, it's in that text that it says, you know, uh, faith without works is dead. You know, it just keeps you busy, right? Like, I need help with that. But if I want to quote and I want to chide myself about what love looks like and feels like and, and what love looks like when it's applied and how God defines it, I would, I would go to those letters, 1st, 2nd, and John, for sure, and 3rd letters in the New Testament. They're all composed sometime around 100 A.D. And, and they're attributed, whether this is actual fact or not, to, you know, the beloved John. John the Evangelist, son of Zebedee, that disciple of Jesus. The, the author in the first letter is actually not even identified, but in letters 2 and 3 identifies himself as a presbyter, which, which means an elder, someone who knows what's going on. It's from one of those letters that I'm going to be reading as we begin a new sermon series today, as well as following a bit of proverbial wisdom, which will be our navigational text for the next several weeks. And that's Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all ways submit to him, and he will make your paths straight. And then, from 1 John 4. Verses 7 through 12, I, uh, 7 through 16, it's found in your, your order there if you want to follow along. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but he, he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he is in us. He has given us of his spirit and we have seen and testified that the father has sent to his son to be the has sent his son to be the savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the son of God and God lives in them and they in God, and so we know and rely 
on the love God has for us. Summed up, God is love, which sums up my canon and my guide and my compass, so to speak. Graceful, gratefully, I can remember it. I, I was never in a church with the tradition of Bible drills, but I would have been horrible at it. This is so easy. One, two, three, three words, God is love, which comes in pretty handy when we face struggles and challenges in stressful times. And babies, <laughs> these have been some stressful times for us. Love is God and God is love. It's all we really need to know to get started living as believers in God and followers of Christ. We must begin with love. It certainly was a good place to start doing some worship planning with Donna about four weeks ago, or maybe it was four years ago. <laughs> we sat at a table and we were thinking as we were planning worship, as we looked ahead at the end of an untraditional summer. There we were. We were looking over all the topics that we had covered that we thought would suit for this pivotal time. Both of us longing for the structure of a sermon series, a set plan, kind of a canon for the time. But I said, the only problem is, Donna, each day, I mean, it seems like almost every minute, but each day, at least every week, brings with it a new challenge, something new, a new stat, a new hurdle, a new, a new anything. I can't, I can't just stay on, on point, on a and commit to a sermon series, I told her. I, I said, because each week I might have to address that week's new topic or tweet. The only thing we know for sure, as we looked at one another, socially distancing, distancing from across the long table, is that there were two absolutes, I'm not going to use the death and taxes thing, that there were only two <laughs> things that we were guaranteed, that there was going to be change, and that God never changes. Bingo. God is our constant, our guide, our, our north star. When all things are cattywampus, and boy, don't they always seem cattywampus, when we feel disoriented or we feel lost, God indeed is our compass. We don't have to go it alone. As I spoke about last week in my sermon, recalling Solomon's prayer when he took the throne, wise enough to know that he needed to ask God's help and the help of others. Solomon is also attributed to writing this proverbial wisdom, this guide, um, this proverb that is on your order of worship. Lean not on your own understanding, we're reminded, sillies. <laughs> God's right here, always, to serve as your compass, to serve you and your, your compassionate community. Now, over the next few weeks, we're going to work our way around this topic with a divinely appointed compass as our navigating tool. We will do this together even while we're apart. So you received a little charm. I was hoping one per household. It's a little compass charm. I hope you got that. If not, we'll get you one. And I want you to carry it with you or put it somewhere that you can be reminded of this. And of course, we've come up with a good theme to suit because that's just what we like doing. And it's found in your order of worship, and that is that text. But it, we're going to be using your cross to compass. Get ready to have your, 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 your shoes blown off your feet by this cleverness. <laughs> for C, for the letter C, the bouncing letter C for compass, compassionate community. I know that's two C's, but we're going to go with compassionate community. Gathering today, we are reminded how much we miss gathering. It's indicative of, of something I'm going to be in addressing in a few moments. Here comes the letter O. Omnipresence. God is with us and meets us where we are to get us to where we need to go. For M, not marshmallows, mercy. The gift of God's grace and forgiveness that we received and then we live it out, especially when we offer that grace and forgiveness to others. Peace. The gift of God's presence that 
blessed understanding when nothing makes sense but just the blessed understanding and it helps us guide our lives acceptance a for acceptance you can join me in this common pscc refrain when we say all we mean all all means all the first of the s's service we aim to be god's presence and how we believe my favorite made-up word serving others with this overabundance of love and finally, a word that by its definition means unity or agreement of feeling or action, especially among individuals with a common interest. Mutual support within a group, that is solidarity. Best expressed by those other than me. First, from an American hero and martyr, Martin Luther King Jr., who said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Or as written by German, Lutheran pastor and theologian Martin Niemöller, when noting the slithering movement of Hitler and his Nazi regime, he wrote, first they came for the socialists and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak for me. Yes, we have a lot to cover in the next few weeks. I'm glad to be able to address you in person, this compassionate community with many faces this Sunday. And though still posting a message for the coming week, for it is in communities such as this that we can learn a lot about the people with whom we choose to congregate, can't we? But more importantly, we can come to understand our own personhood and what we're really made of. Using God's love as our compass can reveal and bless us as it reveals itself within a compassionate community. That is God's omnipresence found in the personhood of friends and faith family. Mercy, when we find ourselves falling short and our community stands ready to pick us up and get us back on our feet to carry out our lives Samaritan style. Peace, when in the company we keep, we can rest and breathe without fear of unwarranted attacks. With God's compass guided community, we know we are loved and we are secure. Acceptance, that regardless of our differences, with our eyes on God, our true north, together we can get there, even if our thumbprints, our vessel of choice, and the clip is a bit different. Unity, not uniformity, painted on the back of our ship of fellows, on our fellowship. Service. When we serve one another or others together, we become God's loving hands and feet. Together and for all others in solidarity, we offer compassion and we seek compassion for others, even those who do not seek compassion for us. The love of God, 1 John 3.16 says, is seen in our willingness to lay down our life for others as Christ did for us. As our friend Dave Ramsey, we're like this now, creator of Financial Peace Institute, Alton, I hope you're listening, as he says, it can be hard for some of us to commit to community, especially if we're guarded or prefer solitude. The community is God's desire for us. It is a sign of mature faith. Because at the end of the day, when we grow in our relationships with others, we're growing in relationship with God. Romans 12 says that because of this, we are better together when we are not alone. Three chords are better than one. So with our loving compass in hand, how can we not, as a compassionate community, how can we not choose God's love as our guide in all things as we engage people? 
where hate tears down and destroys and deconstructs, Martin Luther King wrote. Love builds up and unites. Love created us. Love redeems us and unites us to be a compassionate community navigating change together. Would you pray with me? Lean on me when you're not strong. I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on. Oh, it won't, won't be long. But I'm, I'm going to need somebody to lean on. Amen. Lord, help us to remember. Help us to remember that there is none better than anyone else in your kingdom. Help us to then treat each other the way you treat us. Generous God, because you treat us with your tender love, we take time to pray for our friends, family members, and others who need you now more than ever. Pour out your healing on all who need it. Be generous with your transforming love for those who need it in their lives. Bring forth your reconciliation in families and in places where it is needed especially in the lives of those whose names we lift in this moment of silence. Gifting God, you give us the gifts of the Spirit to use to further your kingdom and to be the body of Christ in the world. We take time to consider all whose lives have been impacted by social inequities and global illness. Creator and inspiration, we thank you for the movement, the slow of the recognition for change, wholeness as a people and the wisdom of sciences that are at work for a cure of social, emotional, and physical ailments. Empower us to be your hands and feet, to continue the work that needs to be done there, here, and in so many other places. There is none like you, God, in your love, your generosity, your gifting, and in your hospitality. And we thank you that you are in our lives, working in and through us, to let people know your kingdom is open to all. In the name of your Son, who opened the doors for all, who broke down barriers and kept people from you, or who broke down barriers that keep people from you, we pray as one community, through the prayer that was taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now we come to a time in worship where we mindfully pause and gather in spirit together around the walking table. At this time, you may be begin readying your elements. Come to the one who welcomes each and every one of us to this table of grace. We bring our broken hearts so they might be made whole. Join in spirit with your sisters and brothers remembering the one who gifts us with loving wisdom. The bread of life for all who hunger. the cup of compassion for a broken world. We shall be known by the company we keep, by the ones who circle around to tend these fires. We shall be known by the ones who sow and reap the seeds of change of life from deep within the earth. It is time now, it is time now that we thrive, it is time we lead ourselves into the well. It is time now, and what a time to be. In this great turning we shall learn to lead in love. In this great turning we shall learn. 
shall be known by the company we keep, by the ones who circle round to tend these fires. We shall be known by the ones who sow and reap the seeds of change alive from deep within the earth. It is time now, it is time now that we thrive, it is time we lead ourselves into the well. Thank you guys for being here today. It was a real treat. Um, I know it wasn't necessarily mentioned directly, but don't forget your Givelify um, uh, offering. I would say donations, but don't forget your uh, donations and your offering. You know, for both. Um, or if you, you know, probably have an envelope, we can take your cash or a check here if you really wanted to, or drop it in the mail. So don't forget that we got to keep the lights on, keep things going, keep the keep everyone going. So it's good. Um, the benediction, unfortunately, is not printed in your order of worship, apparently. Um, so I will be reading it in its entirety. Um, but thank you, ladies, for special music. That was great. Thank you as well. Um, so now it's time for benediction. If I can get you guys to stand. If I can get you to flash your lights. Oops, I need some lights flashing. Oh, there we go. Beautiful. Uh oh I didn't see the baker's light flashing. I don't think you hear me. Oh, I, got a, I got a hand. Okay, that's good. All right. In the loving of neighbor and in the sharing of love, together we shall go on. In the celebration of life and in the sharing of that life together, we shall go on. In the caring earth and in the sharing of the harvest, together we shall go on. In the variety of people and the sharing of our talents, together we shall go on. It has been great worship with you today. And now let's take some time to worship one another in a safe and masked distance. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.